Hi, it's Dr. Ariel Schwartz, and I want to do a little bit of a share on the topic of surrender. So this word in itself can sometimes bring up pretty uncomfortable feelings. It can be associated in some ways with this idea of weakness or being a failure. And I really want to just kind of reframe the word surrender as the process of letting go in a way that can be extremely nourishing and helpful and important. So um, by using the word surrender, I'm really speaking about the ways in which we're gonna counteract the excessive use of control to try and manage ourselves, manage how other people see us or manage other people and uh, kind of what we feel like is intolerable to us about them. And of course, there are times where we really do need to set boundaries and have limits and all of that is healthy. But when an excessive use of control is really limiting our ability to open up or be soft with ourselves or allow ourselves to really just be nourished by the connection with other people, we want to um, kind of fine tune our relationship to softening and surrendering. So, you know, very often what our mind wants to do is to um, kind of categorize or analyze or control or manage our experience. And the practice of surrendering is really about kind of accepting that there are some things we can't control, but it's very much about ultimately connecting back to the heart. So that kind of counter force to the mind that wants to kind of put everything into boxes and, and compartmentalize. The heart is something that is just a part of us that can really receive more, receives, receive ourselves just as we are, other people as they are, and the world as it is. So to surrender really involves trusting your intrinsic wisdom, right? Like that you can actually trust, that word trust sits underneath surrender, that we don't have to figure it all out, right? I have my figure it out parts, but we don't have to figure it all out, that there is some way that we can actually just trust and be with. Um, often there's some kind of like steps along the way of letting go of control towards surrender. And one of those involves softening, which really just involves turning towards ourselves just as we are and of being curious and arriving at what is it that you're feeling rather than thinking or doing, right? But just turning towards softening towards what you're feeling, whether that's a physical level sensation um, or whether that's an emotional level. And just being able to turn towards, oh, I'm feeling afraid, or oh, I'm feeling sad, or oh, I'm feeling contracted and tight, right? I'm feeling pain. And then on this kind of path towards surrender or letting go, the next question becomes, how can I soothe that? If there's a distress that I'm trying to manage or control, actually, what does that distress or hurt or pain or sadness um, what does that need from me? And how might I come in with that loving awareness so that I can offer my own soothing towards that or seek that soothing from others if that's available? So, you know, I, it's it's something that's been kind of on my mind this week in terms of just my own practice between needing to be in control and letting go. And I think it's a very human um you know, kind of common human uh, struggle. And uh, so to kind of invite a little bit around that, I thought I would read just a, a little bit. This is from the Post-Traumatic Growth Guidebook and just a little bit in here on a section that's entitled Vulnerability is Strength. Um, so I'll read two little pieces from this. Owen says, um, sometimes this human life can feel overwhelming. You might, you might want to retreat, hide away, and close the door. You might feel too sensitive for this world. Or in turn, you might put on a thick skin and pretend like you're okay, when in reality you feel terrible. You might hide your emotions or needs behind a mask or a wall, which provides a false sense of strength. And maybe you isolate yourself, even though you really want to feel connected. So if you have lived this way for many years, it can feel profoundly exposing to let someone in, but allowing yourself to be visible can make you feel, um, can make you feel too vulnerable. So you can hold on to that cloak. 
Um, so I'm going to drop down a little bit here and uh, just read one more section. I, ultimately, to live in the world with an open heart is a reclaiming of your innocence. Like a child who is sensitive and tender, this open heart is capable of seeing everything and everyone without judgment. Yes, there are times when you might need to retreat inward because it feels too painful to be this open with others. However, rather than shutting off completely, take your time to go within and explore what you need to open your heart again. You can learn to trust that there is always a glimmer of light when journeying, journeying into the darkness. So listen to your own timing about when you would like to reemerge and open yourself up to others. Coming out of hiding can take time. So we need to honor our own readiness. So I'll invite you to explore those steps along the way. How can I soften towards what I'm feeling? How can I soothe what I'm feeling in service of surrendering? and recognizing that there is great strength in that process. Thank you.